Now, the conflict in eastern Ukraine has been raging for almost four years. The UN says the fighting between pro-Russia separatists and the Ukrainian military has killed more than 10,000 people. The separatists control a large area close to the Russian border surrounding the cities of Luhansk and Donetsk. Uh, though there is a peace deal in place, the Minsk Agreement, there are ceasefire violations on a daily basis. In just a moment, I'll be talking to Alexander Hug, one of the top security monitors for Ukraine. But first, this report from the embattled region. That was DW's Nick Conley reporting there. Well, with me in the studio now is Alexander Hug. He's a principal deputy chief monitor of the OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. That has the special monitoring mission in Ukraine. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Uh, first of all, Recent weeks have brought a dip in the number of ceasefire violations uh, in eastern Ukraine. Uh, they are down considerably from when we last talked a couple of months ago. Do you see a sustainable trend there, a real de-escalation? Our monitors still register a ceasefire violations in the three, if not four, digit numbers on single days. It is true that looking back into 2017, where we have been registering over 401,000 ceasefire violations throughout the year, that's more than 1,000 a day, we are now on an average number of approximately 700 ceasefire violations a day, still staggering high. And the 40,000 plus violations we have seen today do not suggest that it's come anything near by a stable situation. Now, give us an idea of what it's like for your monitors who are there on the ground in eastern Ukraine in what is effectively a war zone. We have at the moment some 740 monitors in Ukraine, most of them at the contact line on both sides of the line where they live and work. Uh, they go on daily patrols in their vehicles close uh, to the contact line to those hotspots where they register not only uh, the violations that have been committed, but also the life and the situation of the civilians that continue to suffer. They had the unfortunate task to register approximately 480 civilian casualties last year. This year alone, almost 20 already registered by our monitors in the areas. Where they can't reach these areas, they use technology such as unmanned aerial vehicles or cameras to observe the situation they observe on the ground. And I'd just like to remind our viewers that uh, if you want to see what's happening there, you can find all of those reports every day online at the OSCE website. Now, the Minsk Agreement stipulated a ceasefire for this area in eastern Ukraine, but there are, as you say, hundreds if not more than a thousand violations every day. Uh, is Minsk dead? I don't think so. Um, it is though difficult to prove uh, the absence of violence, uh, but certainly uh, the agreements have resulted in some weapons being withdrawn, some demining has taken place, and the ceasefire violations, when they spike high, there are platforms now established through these agreements where the management of the conflict will become possible. We have seen last year four times recommitments to the ceasefire, four times the numbers have plummeted down to two-digit numbers, a clear evidence that the sites can stop if they want it. I think it is more a question of will rather than whether or not Minsk has delivered. Well, in trying to give more will to create more motivation, uh, German Foreign Minister Zygmunt Gabriel, he said that even if Minsk is not fully implemented, one should begin to think about easing the sanctions on Russia in order to provide them some incentive. Uh, do you agree? Well, I would argue that the plight of the civilians should be the point of orientation for the sites, for the signatories of the agreement. Civilians still suffer most uh, at the contact line. Their lives are interrupted. They can't go to work. Telephone communication, for instance, at the moment is interrupted in areas beyond government control. People can't call their families on the other side, but people are resilient. They don't give up. I've just spent a week at the contact line. People tell us it's not their war. Uh, they also cross that contact line very frequently. There is hope among people. They're not giving up, but the sides who have it in their hands to stop the violence should take their concerns first. Now, the conflict in eastern Ukraine is getting rather little media attention at the moment, even though people are dying there on a regular basis, and this is a, a conflict with huge implications on Europe's doorstep. Why so little media attention now? The conflict is now in its fourth winter. 
um, the reports that we deliver on a regular basis, publicly so, uh, have become the standard. Uh, while we don't accept this as normal, it has become normal but, 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 okay. uh, that the violence that we register at the contact line has exceeding all uh, predictions that were there in the beginning. We should not accept the situation as normal and the reports that we deliver should see follow-up and changes in attitude by the signatories of the agreements. Uh, briefly, if you can, there's been talk about bringing it in a UN peace mission. Do you think that would help? I think the discussion on how to solve the conflict is helpful. I think uh, the renewed debate and the recognition that a solution for the conflict is needed will help the people in eastern Ukraine, will help those one and a half million internally displaced people and will help those 40,000 Ukrainians that cross the contact line every day. Ultimately, however, it is the sides that need to withdraw their weapons, it's the sides that need to disengage where they stand to close, and it will be the sides that need to demine where those mines place a risk for civilians on either side of the line. Alexander, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Alexander Hook, Deputy uh, Chief Monitor of the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission in Ukraine. Thank you.